So the animated comedy South Park mocked Meghan Markle and Prince Harry in a recent episode called the Worldwide Privacy Tour. Now, that, of course, is a reference to their repeated calls for privacy in interviews. And here is how South Park mocked the obvious hypocrisy. Take a look. Our first guest, the prince and his wife. Yeah. We, we want, want privacy. privacy. We, we want, want privacy. privacy. All right, thanks for having us on the show. It's so awesome to be here. It's great. So let me start with you, sir. You've lived a life with the royal family. You've had everything handed to you, but you say your life has been hard, and now you've written all about it in your new book, Where? Yes, that's right, friend. You see, my wife and I, I are totally like, you should write a book because your family's like stupid, and then so are like journalists. We just want to be normal people. All this attention is so hard. Oh, darling, I think this might be the place. You really think so? It's so quiet and empty here. If we moved here, then people would think we're really serious about wanting to be normal. All right. Now, according to reports, Meghan Markle was, quote, upset and overwhelmed by her portrayal in a cartoon. But anyway, the show's creators were seemingly unfazed by reports of a possible lawsuit, a move that Meghan and Harry now deny. Now, according to a new poll, the couple's approval in the U.S. Uh, is somehow even lower than before. It sank lower after the episode aired. Here with Reaction, the biggest fan of Harry and Meghan ever. <laughs> He's the host of Piers Morgan Uncensored on Fox Nation. Piers Morgan. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay. This, you got to explain this to me. And by the way, I, I, and I think this audience will agree, I admired the fact you were told if you apologized, you can get your show back. And meanwhile, your criticism of those two mm. was dead on accurate, and you would not capitulate. Good for you. Well, I, yeah, thank you. I, um, I watched them whining away to Oprah Winfrey for what seemed like 3,000 hours, <laughs> and I simply observed that I wouldn't believe Meghan Markle if she read the weather report. Uh, I think that's really aged well, that claim, because yeah. I wouldn't. Uh, I don't believe a word either of them say about anything. And what's really interesting to me is following that South Park mockery of them, which really highlighted all their hypocrisies. Uh, their approval ratings now have fallen below Prince Andrew's in America. I mean, how unpopular do you have to be to be less popular than him? <laughs> so it's pretty extraordinary to see their descent. And obviously, on a personal level, I feel really sad. Why? <laughs> you don't feel sad. OK. So here's, here's my... They say all the time they want privacy. Yeah. OK, so they moved to one of the wealthiest areas in Santa Barbara, California, known as Montecito, yeah. where Oprah lives. So if you want privacy, why do you do Oprah? Why do you do a Netflix series? Why do you write a book? Why do you do every interview imaginable? and then come back again and say, I want privacy. Well, it's completely ridiculous. And, and the whole issue between them and the British media, they keep saying how awful the British media were. The truth is, right to the wedding, the media were incredibly supportive. They loved the idea of the first biracial wedding that the British royal family had seen. Meghan Markle got an amazingly positive press. Harry did too. It was a golden day of the wedding. Everyone celebrated this. What happened after the wedding is what caused the problem. They began to go out preaching. But they would be preaching about the environment, watch your carbon footprint. Next thing, they're jumping on Elton John's private plane like a taxi service. <laughs> they literally tweeted about poverty on the day she was in New York having a half a million dollar baby shower with her celebrity chums and flying back on George Clooney's private jet. And this kept going on and on and on, where they would preach one thing, wanting the woke kind of, you know, glory that comes from preaching about woke issues, but at the same time leading completely different lives themselves. So the papers began to call out the hypocrisy. And at that point, they then said, well, in that case, we're victims. Well, let me ask you, do you believe the implied allegations that members of the royal family were somehow racist? No, it's completely... I don't believe it either. Well, it's not only is it, uh, is it nonsense, 
But you may have noticed in his promotional tour for his ghastly book, Spare Me, as I've renamed it, uh, Harry himself says, we didn't mean to say the, the royal Wait, family were racist. renamed the book Spare Me. Spare Me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but Harry, Harry came out recently and said he didn't think... That they didn't mean to imply the royal family were racist. Yes, you did. We watched you on Oprah Winfrey. You said the royals were racist. You just wouldn't name which one of them it was. Now they're saying we never meant to say that. I never believed it at the time. That's why on Good Morning Britain that morning, I came out defending the royal family, said, I just don't believe this stuff. They claim the Archbishop of Canterbury uh. had them secretly married three days before the wedding we saw on TV. Had the Archbishop of Canterbury done that, it would have been an illegal act and he would have been in prison. Right? This is the senior churchman of the, of the UK. So the whole thing was a complete and utter nonsense. Will there ever nonsense. be a reconciliation or that's impossible? That I point? think the problem is... Charles, who's going to be obviously crowned king in May, it's going to be a huge event. Do they go? Do they not go? He is the father, who obviously knows he put his boys through quite a lot with the split from their mum and getting together with Camilla and so on. I think he wants to make amends. The problem is Prince William. Prince William wants to do bad things to his brother, starting, <laughs> I think, with slow dismemberment. Well, I think he's been hurt by his brother. He's been incredibly hurt, and by the attacks in the book on his wife. Kate, right. she gets a whack as well. So there's a lot of ill feeling. All I would say is tune in to the coronation, uh, which I think I'll be covering uh, for you guys, because I think anything... He, if I think I should up, join the happen, coverage. You should come. I should join the coverage. <laughs> Piers Morgan, thank you for being Glad here. Good to see you. Appreciate it.